Welcome to a new video in my channel and um, today I'm going to talk about something different because uh, I think um, it is likely that uh, I'm starting a new chapter and a lot of videos in a new topic. Well, not a new topic because it's all, all, all going to be about seven and a quarter gauge and I've done seven and a quarter gauge before but um, I've decided to build myself a new local which you can see here and um, I mean, you know, I have this blue engine and uh, it had it issues, uh, mostly that it was uh, a little bit underpowered, especially in my garden. And um, while well, quite a few of my friends that I talked to, they had some, you know, bigger engines, uh, you know, boogie engines, uh, which obviously can negotiate in tighter curves better and um, maybe a little bit more power. So I, I just, that just got me thinking that maybe I should do something as well. And I started designing and I started, you know, making plans and um, and then I had to rethink all my plans and I had to start from scratch. And this is sort of the design I ended up with. And this is a completely freelance loco. It, uh, well, I, I took some design elements from various locos, but uh, then I ended up designing something that I can, I can put together. Most, um, I'm saying put together, uh, I mean that uh, using the limited tools that I have in my, you know, at home. So um, let me tell you why I, you know, what was the decision behind that. So actually this is the, the local that I started building. And um, this is an actual locomotive in the Hungarian, Hungarian railways and it's called the MK48. And this is a narrow gauge uh, locomotive. So, I, I mean, I quite like this uh, in, our, in our holiday home. There is an Arab Gage Railway and they have quite a few of these locomotives. And uh, this is probably the second most used in, uh, in narrow gauge railways. But the numbers are like, I think it's like in the 20s or 30s. So, you know, it's not a big country and this was not sold anywhere uh, abroad. So we only have a few of these. Well, I mean, these 30, I, I guess. And, and of course, when I designed this, then I run into an all sorts of issues. Uh, first of all, I wanted to model the boogie to be at least very similar to the real one. And I was running into all sorts of issues with, you know, how I can make the bogey to have some springs. Uh, so the, you know, the axles not to be rigid. Uh, definitely, I had a lot of size constraint because... Uh, this is a narrow gauge loco and I, I, had, I designed the whole thing to 1 to 6 scale but that means that in a real loco uh, the, the gauge would be you know, much smaller than uh, 7 and a quarter uh, but well, I, use, I wanted to use 7 and a quarter so uh, compared to the body the bogey is really oversized and then I've just had like issues that I knew that the bogey is going to hit the uh, the steps, which are not even modeled here. Not to mention that I still really had to play around with you know how I designed the spring mechanism, and um, so I think I had I, I I was making a lot of compromises. And then on top of that, the company I usually do the laser cutting with. They said that they pretty much just only have like, you know, one millimeter radius, uh, these band forms, and they can't bend anything. Well, they wouldn't bend anything different than that, which means that, you know, the top of this uh, cap here, well, the top of the cap, the, the top here, these roundings would, um, so they wouldn't do it. And so they, they said if they can probably bend it in steps, but it's, it's not going to look good. And of course, it's going to take a lot. Of, uh, it's going to cost a lot of money, and that wouldn't be something that I would willing to pay for. And I designed the whole, you know, the body from three millimeter um, sheets of metal, which means that you know there is no way I would be able to bend this at home. So that was the two main reason uh, that I um, uh, basically have given up on this one. I thought I'm not going to do anything, so I've given up on the whole loco idea. Then that got me thinking like, you know, what sort of engine I can build that uh, that I can do with, you know, all these restrictions. And of course I looked at a couple of models, but there was always something that, oh, this, um, you know, it, 
it's not the body type that I can model or you know I wouldn't be able to bend those angles uh, and the radiuses as well so finally I came up with this idea um, first of all I started with the boogie because always the boogie was the biggest issue and here I designed something which is very similar to the uh, the carriages that I have already where I have designed these uh, you know v-shapes um, I think it's called the W guards and um, I use these uh, blocks which I think the T204 blocks we that usually have an additional piece here that uh, even in my um, carriage or in my wagons they are uh, basically milled off and I have created some pockets here for some springs and this is how the axle is sprung and of course that means that this whole side plate is huge compared to the you know the uh, the um, you know the wheels and everything which means that the main frame of the loco has to be really really high so that means that I needed to pick or design a loco which is uh, I don't know how it's called in English this sort of like the full body so it doesn't have the narrow um, engine cover because then obviously it would really really show that the uh, you know the main floor is is in that height and here I could pretty much hide that uh, you know with this type of body it's not that noticeable I mean probably you can still really tell because that surface is the uh, the main frame so the um, so the buffer uh, or this end plate looks a little bit oversized but I'm hiding that fact with um, you know placing the headlights here so pretty much like um, the you know the Ludmilla locos uh, from Germany I mean those are mainline locos and they also have the you know the headlights here so they have this big massive you know front uh, plate and you know the main body is just sort of like extends down uh, just to make uh, this uh, visually a little bit better here I'm, I'm still making one sort of compromise I mean I definitely wanted to have some radiuses here on the on the front plates and um, so this is something that I still need to bend and I'm probably I'm going to use the help of my friend but at least I designed all of these to be 20 millimeter radius so we're probably going to take some pipe or something the, we are going to use it as a bend form and a friend of mine has a has a have a press so I think these are like four plates that we would need to bend but everything else is uh, either doesn't require bending or it can be bent with a one millimeter radius so here in the roof profile I mean I used a bend here in the middle and then a small bend here but they are all one millimeter radius so the uh, you know the, they would be able to uh, do this for me at the laser cutting company and um, the reason I'm making this video now because you know the CAD design for this started like probably in the beginning of the year but um, I got the design finalized and um, I sent it off to the, free, uh, the laser cutting company and I got the code it's something like in the region of 800 euros something like that with cutting and bending and the materials and everything and I said okay let's do this and uh, <laughs> I think that was like sometime last week and they asked me to do some small uh, de um, design revisions mostly just to add more materials when they need to bend it and um, so I said yeah here are the modifications and um, you know please let me know if, if it's ready and I think I got the email on Monday that uh, they have all cut and done everything so I'm actually going tomorrow and pick up all the pieces so it is roughly I think 80 kilos of uh, steel you know cut and bend so there's definitely going to be a lot everything in the uh, well almost everything here in the boogie is uh, 10 mil plates um, with the exception of this which is 5 mil and there is a plate here which uh, it holds the motor that that's also 5 mil and uh, yeah sorry these small braces are 5 mil but then everything else, else is 10 and the floor and these main you know front plates are five mil and then pretty much everything is two mil so the roof and the sides and some of the decorations and the uh, window frames and the door frames and uh, the only these loofs I made them from one mil because you know they don't have to be two mil and 
um, it's you know 60 60 of them no it's 80 of them so um, you know I could use a different uh, sheet of material for that the design is not complete as in I haven't you know copied and replicated uh, all the uh, all the pieces uh, uh, like you know this um, front piece to the other side so you can see that this is how I designed the batteries to to be so I'm just going to use the same batteries that I am in my current engine and you can see a lot of holes so that I can use if I need to mount any everything in anything in the future there are a lot of holes here for the wires for the lights uh, to pass through and um, yeah so the only thing which I haven't really completed is uh, um, this region here, well, this area between the two boogies, um, I might just place, you know, speakers or a horn here. And um, yeah, the other thing that I haven't told you that this is supposed to be an electric local. So at some point, I need to do some pantographs here, uh, and I couldn't really make up your mind, make up my mind what size they need to be, and also what, uh, uh, you know, what design I need to. Peak. So I think what's going to happen is I will try to get all the parts you know well together that you can see here, and I will try to come up with sort of the size that it's going to fit here on the roof. So probably it's going to be like a I don't know like a slightly narrower and a shorter pantograph, um, and uh, I, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do this. I, I think I'm probably just going to buy some. You know angle irons and some rods and and try to bend and uh, weld something myself so that's definitely going to be a challenge i mean it would have been nice if i you know at least can 3d print some sorry um, laser cut some of the details but uh, i should be able to manage without it we'll see i mean worst case scenario i'm going to do that or at least i'm going to do it now so it's going to look like a like a diesel engine i mean this uh, part here uh, this uh, roof um, element is you know more reminiscent to um, electric locos and I'm planning to add a hinge to this top plate this is why it is completely flat so this can hinge up so I can access some of the um, you know main switches and fuses so I'm planning to build some sort of platform in here so I can access um, these switches so, and then everything is going to be bolted here to the floor so I can just lift the whole uh, body, uh, sorry, the, the chassis off. Um, and um, yeah, hopefully that's going to be, you know, it can be serviced easily. And I think the whole, you know, the, the, the chassis or the tow body part is not going to be that heavy that uh, cannot be easily lifted by, I don't know, maybe not just by myself, but, you know, somebody helping me. And I'm, I'm probably just like in my current engine, I mean, I would need to have some wires for the headlights. I mean, of course, these lower headlights are going to be on the um, on the body, but these upper headlights and um, maybe cab lights, something. So I would probably have a couple of wires, so some sort of harness that I need to disconnect. But other than that, I should be able to lift the top off and uh, you know just work on the wiring if I if I ever need to. So that's the oh yeah yeah. So the other thing I. I said that because it's an electric engine, maybe the only decoration I can do here is um, maybe some, uh, what is it, um, not barrels, so something for the air tanks, so some imitation of air tanks I can just probably put between the two boogies, but uh, if I don't do it this year, then that could be, you know, a project for next, next year. And what you can see here is, um, is mostly all the uh, laser cut parts, but probably you realize that you know this part is not a laser cut part. Also, there is one here for the top headlight and you know the horns, and I've also designed this um, box here, which looks like the thing where they store the sand. So the plan is that I'm going to 3D print these details, and probably I should add a few more 3D printed details because the you know the rest looks like. You know very simple at the moment um, i have some holes here for handrails which i obviously haven't modeled probably something here for a, um, um, a like a door lock as well i'm planning to open these you know make this add to hinge to these doors so they can open and at some point probably add cap details as well which are going to be either 
made from wood or uh, partially 3D printed. So we'll see how this 3D printing is going to turn out. But uh, I've seen a you know very good example online where there was a guy who was 3D printing. Um, uh, he wanted to bend sheet metal, so he 3D printed the um, the forms, and uh, to make them rigid enough. He 3D printed them hollow and then he just used two-part epoxy to fill up the 3D print. And I think this is what I'm going to do as well. So I'm just going to print these as hollow and um, just use epoxy or something to fill them all the way up. So it just gives them, you know, more physical strength. Um, uh, so it would probably better, you know, small scratches or, you know, small dents if, if you know, if they get kicked on. They are not just going to break as any you know hollow 3d print would do or well, at least that's the idea and then uh, i think maybe i should design some you know like some logos here uh, i think just like my current engine it's sort of like bordering you know narrow gauge and standard gauge um, it's uh, definitely a really short one I, that was uh, one of the ideas so the main you know body is um, 120 centimeters, so 1.2 meters, and the width is 40 centimeters, and the high is 60 centimeters. So um, I think it looks a little bit taller than most mainline engines, so hence it would be like something like a narrow gauge or something similar. So these are all the plans, and I think what I also wanted to show you is the couple of the things that I've ordered for these loco. So I was, um, you know, I was um, shopping online. Uh, I buy everything from AliExpress and uh, in my previous local there was this um, uh, volt amp energy meter so it has a 100 amp shunt and then it measures uh, the you know the current the total consumption and everything on the local and what I really use this for is I was using this energy measurement and uh, all my previous run I was making notes of how much you know what is the value of this uh, energy value uh, after every turn or every you know lap that i do and actually this is a really good indication if something goes wrong so i definitely wanted something similar in this local as well and this also has things like uh, you can set what is your voltage and then based on the voltage it would uh, show this uh, state of charge graph and it can also calculate the battery capacity and i think that also is calculated based on the voltage uh, but what I really need is uh, volts, the amps, and the watt hours. Uh, and you can also calculate runtime. So uh, I think it's nice. It's a little bit more complicated than my previous one. Uh, my previous one had few things on the screen, but uh, oh yeah, it was actually not this one. Something really similar. So I, I wasn't sure if I want this uh, this one with the extra features mostly because it probably has a smaller digits on the screen, so it could be a little bit more difficult to see. And also found these uh, nice uh, status lights, and uh, also these um, connectors. And here I picked, uh, I think there are different variants here, so you have these X, GX12, GX16, GX20, and they are just different sizes. And of course they come with um, different pin sizes obviously the smaller one will, will be, only go up to pin 7 so if you need anything bigger then you, you need to pick either the 16 or a 20 and i think i picked gx20 and the 10 pin version so that's going to be one on the front oh well on each side and this is how i'm going to control the hand controller the wired throttle i uh, got some more buttons with lights so these are just push buttons Oh, and I found these and I absolutely love these. So these are just uh, switches, but instead of uh, flicking them, you just turn them. So you can turn like, I think like 30 degrees or 45 degrees. And by the way, all of them came, come with this connector. So again, it makes it really easy to service them, swap them out. Um, this is similar, but um, it's different size. So these are 90 millimeters, the other one was 16. We'll see. Oh yeah, and they are illuminated, so you can pick the color that you want. It looks quite fancy. And um, this is the reason I bought the 10 pin one, because I found these multi-core wires and they go up to 24 cores. But then 
only up to up to 10 core they have different colors so you can see that yeah so the 10 core looks like this but then anything more it just becomes all white so i thought you know you must have colors because then it would be so easy to just you know match the plug side and the other side so that's why i've gone to up to 10 and i think that should be enough um, some more connectors and I also bought some 4-pin connectors, those are going to be the charge um, connections. And um, I found this small 12 volt cabin, actually 12 or 24 volt uh, cabinet lights. This is 1 watt LEDs, uh, I think these are going to be used for the headlights and you can also buy them in red, so they can be tail lights. And I found this slightly bigger version which is uh, 32 mil diameter. So that's going to be the headlight on the top and the smaller ones are going to be the, the two one below. And you can also, uh, you know, pick one right, 4000 Kelvin or, you know, cool light, which is nice. And this is one of the older purchases. Um, just wanted to make sure that I can measure, um, you know, how fast the motor is uh, rotating so I can calculate the um, transmission, not transmission, yeah, the chain rates or the sprockets. Um, so I bought this um, a couple of months ago. It's arrived already. It works fine. I think it's just a you know, general tachometer. And the motor is, uh, I was recommended to buy these type of motors. So I bought the 24 volt 450 version. And if you remember the drawing, there is one, is, there's going to be one in each bogey. So the decision is, is, uh, I haven't modeled the sprockets, sorry, I haven't modeled the chains, the sprockets are available, but you can see that the motor is mounted sort of in the middle, it's going to drive one of the axles and then the, the, the other axle is going to be driven by another set of sprockets and a chain. So I'm going to have, uh, so in my current engine I have 2 times 250 watts, now I'm going to have 2 times 450 watts, so 900 watts altogether. And then this, the gearing is going to be much better matched with the sort of the top speed that I want to. Because, um, so this turns, I mean, I can get to the specs. I don't remember the actual, um, well, that's the rated speed for the motor. But uh, with the reduction, I think it's, it must be mentioned somewhere here, or I just measured it. But, um, which means that the, I think with this reduction, uh, if I do um, like a direct drive on the on the axle, and with sort of my wheel my wheel size is going to be ten. Oh no, I think eleven or twelve kilometers per hour, and I wanted something more. So I think what I'm going to use, which it's hardly visible here, but uh, the sprocket on the motor is going to be slightly bigger than the sprocket on the axle. So I can get some speed increase, but still it's going to be much, uh, it's going to be much slower uh, than my current engine. So I'm thinking that, you know, I'm going to have more powers uh, on the motor and then better reduction, which means that I probably have even more power. Uh, of course, the engine is going to be, you know, heavier as well, but I think in, you know, in overall, it's going to be a much more powerful engine which is going to be, you know, great on my uh, home layout, which has a lot of bends and curves and, and uh, inclines as well. And that's the last one that I wanted to include here. And, um, and I think these are, you know, really good products. Well, hopefully they are going to be just as good as I sort of I'm seeing them on the, on the listing. Once they arrive, I might just put up, um, you know, just a simple video so you can watch you can look how they you know they look like what is the size and also of course how these leds work and um as you can see for most you can you can i think for all the switches and the lights i specified that i want 24 volts one so i don't even need any sort of reduction or resistors uh i can just uh, wire them straight to my 24 volts you know the two batteries in series so i think it will be really easy I think that would be all for today. I would definitely post some updates like build videos on uh, on the engine. I do have a separate playlist for all my seven and a quarter gauge stuff. So if you're only interested in, in that topic, then you can just look at the playlist and 
that would have all the videos that you want to see. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.